So, Death Awareness Week is September 22nd to the 27th, and we're gonna talk about it on my channel today. Of course, by the time this video goes up, it will probably be October, but I've been sick during the entire Awareness Week, so there's not much I can do. First and foremost, if you see this absurd uh, meme anywhere on the internet, roll your eyes to the back of your head as far as you can and walk away from the computer. You make absolutely no sense why are you here. It's pretty common knowledge what the difference between screaming and yawning is. They look like two completely different things. I don't know who the hell made this shit up, but um, it's shit. So in the United States alone, there's about two million people who are deaf, and in the United States, there are about 313 million people total. So two million and that, it's a pretty small number, but it is still a significant number. Now, do you want to know how many schools there are just for the deaf and hard of hearing? Five. Spread out across the country. Now, this is strictly for college and universities. I'm not talking about public high schools. So, I don't know what the number of public high schools are, but for college and university, five. Now, the main word we're looking at is deaf. A four-letter word. It's not a big word at all. But there's three categories that fall under that word. You have deaf, deaf, and hard of hearing, which is five words total, but whatever. You have the little d deaf, which is just strictly for people who are profoundly deaf. They have very little amount of hearing left. There are actually very few people in the world that have lost 100% of their hearing. There are people who can hear a certain pitch in sounds, but for the most part, there are not a lot of people who are 100% deaf. These people are typically raised to be oral, and they just don't get involved in deaf culture. Which brings me to the big D deaf, which is people who are deaf that are actually more involved in the community, typically they know sign language, they get, they just have this big community. Some of the people in this community may have been raised to be oral when they were younger, but for the most part, they're probably using sign language as their preferred communication. And then you have hard of hearing, which is for the people who have a mild, moderate, or severe hearing loss, but they're not profoundly deaf. It's just enough hearing loss that it actually does affect their everyday life. Now you'll notice that I sometimes use deaf and hard of hearing interchangeably. Sometimes I just use deaf, sometimes I just use hard of hearing. And the reason for that is because hearing people in mine and other people's experiences, they still seem to think hard of hearing as being able to hear normally. For some reason that I don't know. So usually just using the word deaf makes it a lot easier, but not really. Plus the deaf side of makeup is a lot shorter and flows a lot better than the hard of hearing side of makeup. Just say it out loud. Trust me, it sounds better. Now, a long time ago, the term hearing impaired was used, and you hear it a lot when you uh, uh, talk to a doctor. This term is not acceptable anymore in the deaf community. And the reason for that is because it's very similar to deaf mute and deaf and dumb, and it's just not appropriate. But I will link more information to that down below and that'll explain it just a little bit better. Now for the personal question and answers part of this video. Question number one, are you deaf or hard of hearing? I am hard of hearing. I have maybe a little less than half of the hearing left in my right ear and um, probably a little bit more than half left in my left ear. How long have you been hard of hearing? Uh, probably all my life, but I didn't pay attention to it until sixth grade when somebody paid attention to it for me. Because at 12 years old, all I care about is Sailor Moon, Pokemon, and macaroni and cheese. Question number three, how did you become hard of hearing? 
Well, my abuser whose vagina I came out of became deaf at the age of three did due to an illness and then she got pregnant with me, gave birth to me, and then it was just passed down genetically. You can become deaf or hard of hearing in a few ways. Genetics, an illness, it just happens. Or if you just have too many loud sounds going on on a regular basis and that damages your hearing. And the most popular question I get on Tumblr a few times a month is, do I know sign language? And the answer for the most part is no. I know the basics and I try to self-study it, but it's very hard to self-study sign language. Now let's talk about the cochlear implant and hearing aid debate. A hearing aid is simply a device that may or may not help you be able to hear something. It's artificial hearing, first of all. And a cochlear implant is something that is surgically implanted into your skull, which again, is supposed to help you hear something. Now, the reason why it's such a debate is hearing folks tend to think that it is a absolute miracle worker, but the truth is that it's not. You have to be qualified for hearing aids and cochlear implants. And even if you are qualified for either of those things, it doesn't mean that it's going to work. Cochlear implants and hearing aids are like depression medication or any kind of medication. It works differently for everybody. Just because it worked for one person does not mean that it works for another person. I will put a link down below to videos of what hearing aids and cochlear implants actually sound like. Hearing noise and it's still a guessing game. You still have to put work into it. It is not a miracle worker by any means. Secondly, they're very expensive. Most insurance companies do not cover them. Now, co cochlear, when it comes to cochlear implants, I'm not completely sure, but I do know with hearing aids, most insurance companies do not cover it. Mine does not. It can cost anywhere from 2,000 to 10,000 for one single hearing aid. Not a pair, but a single one. And in case you're wondering why insurance companies won't cover them, they consider hearing aids and cochlear implants to be a cosmetic procedure. Because I guess I missed the memo where a bunch of hearing people were lined up to get annoying things in their ears. They're not comfortable, okay? Oh, switched at birth. Many people have asked us on Tumblr how we feel about switched at birth. It's about two girls that have been switched at birth. One is hearing and one is deaf. Now, when the show was first announced, a lot of us were very excited. We were thinking, oh, a mainstream show on ABC Family that's gonna be partly about us and for us. Unfortunately, that's not the case. In the end, it turned out to be a show made by hearing people for hearing people, and I will explain. First of all, there's this thing called SimCom. Basically, it's somebody talking while signing, and I understand this for hearing folks or oral deaf folks who have just started with sign language. I get that, that's completely acceptable to me. But when you have Regina, who has been having Daphne for about 18 years, Daphne became deaf around the age of three. So that's about 15 years of learning and using sign language. You would think by 15 years of sign language usage, Regina would be pretty fluent. So why is Regina speaking to Daphne while she is signing? Daphne cannot hear you, so I don't understand why this is the case. Marley Matlin's character and Sean Birdie's character cannot hear you. So I don't understand why that's a thing. I also do not understand why that why Daphne talks while she is signing. Your mother should be fluent, so why are you doing that? A lot of the times, people who are active in the deaf community, they don't talk while signing, so it's just weird. Marley Matlin and Sean Birdie's character and Ryan, I don't remember his last name, character, 
don't speak while signing, though so I'm not sure why everybody else is. But that doesn't mean that Switched at Birth is 100% terrible. Season 2 had very, very good moments in the show. There was a character named Noah who was hearing and started to become hard of hearing and he went through a lot of struggles trying to cope with that. And it makes a lot of sense when you've been growing up being hearing for most of your life and you start to lose that sense, it's a little overwhelming. And they did really well with his character. Other things that they did really well with was when Emmett came in contact with the police when he was working on his car. Obviously, Emmett is deaf, so when the police officers were shining a flashlight in his eyes, he couldn't see them, and he was trying to use his hands to communicate and say that he's deaf and he has no idea what's going on. And they handcuffed him, and that was troublesome. Also, the scene where you have that uh, Marley Matlin's character's class and they talk about not having a hearing loss but having deaf gain. That was also a very good scene. That scene is actually somewhere on YouTube so if I could find it I will link that down below. Another scene that Switched at Birth did really 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 well was when Daphne had her food truck and she got robbed. And one guy that distracted her and another guy that physically assaulted her and stole her money. They knew she was deaf and they took that opportunity to sneak up on her and rob her. That is a thing that happens. Bad people take advantage of us and they hurt us. Shit happens to everybody, here or not, but it's extremely hurtful when somebody takes that opportunity to take advantage of you and hurt you. But I will have links down below to Tumblr posts that have explained why Switched at Birth may be a good start, but it still needs a hell of a lot of work. Now here are some deaf do's and don'ts when it comes to hearing people interacting with people who are deaf and hard of hearing. First and foremost, when you come up to someone who is deaf and hard of hearing, ask them what their preferred method of communication is. Some people who are deaf communicate orally. Some use sign. Some would rather just take a piece of paper and write or use a smartphone and type it out on the notepad app. Another thing to do is to just treat us like every other human being on the damn planet. Now, I have a handful of deaf don't. First of all, Please don't ask us ridiculous, nonsensical questions. I've been asked if I can drive. I've been asked if I can have children. I've been asked if I can wipe my own butt. Use your brain, please. And the only thing we can't do is hear very well. We can do your basic everyday things. Trust me. It was actually illegal for us to drive until I think the late 60s because they thought that we wouldn't, they thought that we would be very distracted when it comes to driving. Now, think about this. When you hear about car crashes, and there are a lot of those here every single day, how many of them make the news because they couldn't hear? I watched the news religiously and I had not heard one deaf person get into a car crash and make it on the news. I'm just saying. I mean, here's the deal. Hearing folks, you have your kids in the back being loud, you have your Taylor Swift, you know, all the way up very loudly and you're singing along, those are distractions. We're all the same in this department, we all have the same distractions, so don't use that excuse on us. Also the wiping my own butt part, I didn't know yours were required to wipe butts. Do you wipe your butt with your ears? Can I have your flexibility? Another thing that is very, very annoying is when people think they're funny and they put their hands in front of their mouths and whisper some kind of nonsense and go, do you know what I just said? It's very annoying. Do not play games with us. We don't appreciate it. Don't treat us like we're incompetent. And third, do not comment or compliment us on our speech. 
I understand why that sounds very strange because compliments are nice. We like compliments, we do. But it's like putting down a woman to compliment another woman is kind of a backhanded compliment. We have been forced by society to use oral communication. We have been forced to take speech therapy classes. And when we do talk, there's a lot of negative comments about our voices. Lots of sounding like seals comments, lots of sounding retarded comments. I've had a few comments on my video say, you sound so great for a deaf person, and what it's, it's a backhanded compliment. You're complimenting me, but you're insulting everybody else who may not sound great to you. When you can't hear how sounds are supposed to sound, it's a complicated thing to learn, so it's just best to not say that kind of thing. You can say, hey, I like your voice, but saying you sound great and you talk great for a deaf person just isn't, it's not the way to go. I mean, you probably wouldn't walk up to a person who walks with the cane and say, hey, you walk well for a disabled person. Don't do it. Don't do that either. Now, what can you do to help us? First of all, treat us like human beings. Also, contact your local police officers and tell them to do better training or to be trained at all when it comes to dealing with people who are deaf and hard of hearing. I am so tired of reading reports of deaf people being killed because officers think that everybody and their grandmother had bat hearing. A fellow YouTuber was almost shot down because he could not hear a police officer call him. A deaf homeless man was shot to death because he was walking around with a little carving knife that he used to carve into trees. Nice little pictures because he could not hear police officers calling his name. A deaf woman was tased when she called 911 to come to her house because she was robbed and they were notified but they still tased her because they told her to stop running at them even though she could not hear them. I am so tired of reading articles about my people getting shot and killed or injured because that. Also, when 9-11 happened, there was a group of people who were deaf and they were in a classroom being taught and teaching and they were practically abandoned when the Twin Towers hit because nobody thought to tell them, hey, Twin Towers were hit, we need to get out. This was back when they didn't have uh, alarms with lights to let them know that something was happening. There is a documentary, a small documentary on YouTube from a fellow deaf filmmaker who talked to police and talked to people that were in 9-11 and I will link that down below. Also the last thing that's a little bit, actually it's not trivial, it's actually important. Ask YouTubers, the makeup community, the comedy community, just the YouTube community in general, if they put background music to please take it off and even better, ask them if they can start capturing their videos. Because we watch YouTube as well. Hell, I make YouTube videos and I caption my videos. If I, with half of my hearing gone, can close caption my videos, hearing people can do it too. It takes a lot of work for me to understand myself 100% and, uh, you know, get the right words. And sometimes I make mistakes, but if I can do it, everybody else can do it as well. I have been working for years to get many of my favorite YouTubers to do some captioning and to tone down on the background music. Some of it's worked, some of it hasn't. Some people have been nice enough to realize, oh, you're right, I'll stop that. And it's been really good.
I will link some YouTubers down below that do caption their videos or they don't do any background music at all and if you have similar hearing to me, if you put it in earphones, it should be pretty easy to understand. So uh, in general, all of us are pretty different. There is not one amount of hearing loss. Some people are very profoundly deaf. Some people can only hear out of one ear. It's different for everybody. Understanding you all depends on your accent. If you have facial hair, background noise, it all depends. We put a lot of work into trying to communicate with you so if you could give us a little bit back that would be very helpful which brings me to one other don't if you're trying to talk to somebody and they don't understand you don't go oh never mind it, it's it's not worth it and all it does is make us feel shitty about ourselves the amount of work that we put in to understand you is a lot more work than you have to put in to under or to communicate with us. It only takes a few seconds to write something down or to type on a smartphone. So hopefully uh, you learned a little bit of something today. There's probably a lot more that I could cover, but this video is going to be so long as it is. I will put links down below to lots of information, the basics, switch that for cochlear implants, um, the videos and documentaries that, that I mentioned. I also have my personal Tumblr and uh, my Tumblr that I made strictly for my child abuse experience and my deaf experience. There's also a Tumblr called Legalized Deafies which has a lot of information that you can look up and just leave them something in their ass box and Mike, I'm pretty sure will answer you. I hope you learned a few things today and you learned a little bit about me and I will see you in my next video.